Yeah, that's the one where they're doing this. Remember uh, that? Yeah, of course. How can you forget that? that? How right? can you forget that music Classic. video? Hey, we're in October now. Now we can get really start talking about Halloween. Absolutely. Thanks for joining us, everyone. I'm Eric Connert. I'm Stella Escobedo. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. It is October 1st, so let's go ahead and talk about Halloween. Woo! Uh, yes, uh, we had the robot from Eric yesterday. Yes. And then Thriller today. The Michael okay. Jackson I moves. Like Michael Jackson moves. There you go. Uh, good morning, guys. Yeah, October 1st. Yeah, the bills are due. You know, all that stuff. But then we're getting into this whole fall festival season and Halloween. I mean, it's an exciting time of year and a beautiful time of year here in San Diego. Honestly, one of my favorite holidays and uh, definitely seasons for us in San Diego. Don't tell the rest of the country, though, because it's kind of our little special place right now. It's not as crowded and you get beautiful weather. I mean, we have clear conditions this morning, as you see Mount Soledad's view looking all the way to downtown San Diego. You can see Tijuana right there as well, and it's 60 degrees. So you're waking up to cool conditions, but not to worry by this afternoon. It will be warm. We're going to have a warm weekend ahead as well. Let's fill you in on what's going on with our roads this morning because uh, Jenny is out somewhere spooky. So we'll show you what she's up to later on. For now, I have your traffic covered right there along the Coronado Bridge just at the end where you get onto Coronado. That's where that slowing is right by NAS North Island as people enter the base there. There was some minor slowing going into the port of entry in San Ysidro area, but that has cleared. So roads are looking pretty good. I'll send it back to you. This morning, the fight over a vaccine mandate for healthcare workers is picking up now that a key deadline has passed, and it will be a focus of a rally today. Healthcare workers must now be fully vaccinated against COVID or risk getting fired. News 8 7 Ronnie is live outside Rady Children's Hospital with a look at where major health groups stand here this morning. Good morning. Good morning to you as well. That's right. This is uh, going to be a big issue moving forward because yesterday was the final day for those healthcare workers to be vaccinated or risk termination. Now, from the healthcare facilities that we've spoken with, upwards of 95% of their employees are fully vaccinated or exempt. They are covered. However, there are some situations where around 3%, all the way down to about half a percent for Scripps, for example, says that their healthcare workers will be forced to go into that voluntary resignation status because of their uh, lack of a vaccination. So this is the point of that rally that will take place today between 2 and 4 p.m. The Scripps CEO says overwhelmingly, though, that the numbers for their hospitals are looking good. There's been a lot of support for vaccinations. And even before the mandate, we had 85% of our employees were vaccinated. So if this were an election, it would be a landslide in, in terms of who won. Vaccinations win. So, um, so there are, are exemptions we have granted. We're trying to be as fair as possible. Uh, and, and, and believe me, I care about every single one of these employees. Every single one of these employees are needed, um, you know, and they've done great work. Um, and, and I hate to lose them, but we're losing them because it's their choice uh, not to get vaccinated. And jumping into some of those numbers, Sharp Hospital says over 95% of their 18,000 employees are fully vaccinated or exempt. They say only 3% of their staff is unvaccinated. For Kaiser Permanente, they say 97% of their staff is fully vaccinated or exempt. And at Scripps Health, 99% of their employees are vaccinated or exempt. So under those numbers, you're really looking at a very small fraction of uh, healthcare workers who are risking their jobs. That group, however, America's healthcare workers from Medical Freedom is expected to gather here in front of Rady Children's Hospital between 2 and 4 p.m. today. They say they'll be advocating for bodily autonomy and the right to say no. And of course, speaking of the right to say no to that vaccine. Now, the healthcare workers who are partially vaccinated or who are waiting kind of until that last minute to get that first dose of the vaccine. Most of the healthcare facilities that we spoke with say they are making accommodations for them. Even though yesterday was the deadline to be fully vaccinated, they say moving forward, if their health healthcare employees are partially vaccinated, they'll still be able to come to work regularly. They'll have to get tested twice a week, but then can move forward with that second dose to become fully vaccinated. For the healthcare workers who are still refusing to get vaccinated at all, they say they will enter that voluntary resignation status soon or be terminated from their position. Outside of Rady Children's Hospital. I'm Evan Irani, News 8. Evan, thank you. And this morning, 24,000 healthcare workers at Kaiser Permanente could vote on a strike as their contract expired overnight. The union and Kaiser have been trying to reach an agreement. The union is asking for a 4% wage increase for all members over the next three years. Kaiser offered a 1% wage increase with a 1% bonus for each year. By law, the union has to give Kaiser a 10-day notice before officially going on strike. 
New this morning, the company Merck says its COVID pill reduces deaths and hospitalizations by half in people with early cases of coronavirus. The company says they will soon ask for authorization to use the pill in the U.S. and the world. This would be the first pill approved to treat COVID. Also a significant note, because of the positive results, phase three of the trial stopped early at the advice of independent medical advisors. Now this news comes as Pfizer is also testing a pill that could prevent COVID. This morning, Governor Gavin Newsom is expected to make a major announcement on school safety and COVID prevention. Details on what exactly he'll discuss are unknown, but his office says he will be highlighting the state's ongoing efforts to protect students and faculty who are back for in-person learning. It comes after San Diego Unified's school board approved a vaccine mandate for staff and students 16 years and older. More parents say they are willing to vaccinate their young kids against COVID-19, according to this latest national survey from the Kaiser Family Foundation. 34% of parents of kids ages 5 to 11 say they would have their children vaccinated once approved for that age group. That's up from 26% in July. 32% say they'll wait and see. 24% say they definitely will not. The state's mask mandates for schools will remain in place for now. A judge in Vista denied an emergency request by the parent-led groups let them breathe and reopen California schools. They argue mask mandates are harmful to some children's emotional health and education. But the judge said changing policies after kids have been in school for months just doesn't make sense right now. Another hearing, though, is scheduled for November 8th. A man who killed a San Diego police officer is now facing the death penalty. That's right. The jury recommended the death penalty after convicting Jesse Gomez for killing officer Jonathan de Guzman and hurting his partner back in 2016. Given California's moratorium on executions, Gomez could spend the rest of his life on death row. A judge will make the final decision on the sentence later this month. And the man who murdered a woman at a Poway synagogue two years ago will spend the rest of his life in prison. He opened fire at the Chabad of Poway during a very important Jewish holiday in a hate-motivated shooting, killing 60-year-old Lori Gilbert Kay and hurting three others. Emotions ran high as Lori's family and friends spoke out in court. Witnessing my father try to revive my mother and fail not only as her husband but as a doctor of 40-plus years was a colossal tragedy in itself, for she died instantly. And that was Lori's daughter. The shooter took a plea deal to avoid the death penalty. This morning, California's eviction moratorium has officially expired, but there are still billions of dollars in funding statewide to help tenants. To qualify for emergency relief, tenants will need to show they have been financially impacted by the pandemic and earned below 80% of the area median income. In San Diego County, that's $97,000 for a family of four. If you haven't filled out an application for the rental assistance program, go do that today. For more information on applying for emergency assistance, go to CBS8.com and just click on the help button. The federal government remains open this morning. Democrats and Republicans sent a bill to President Biden in time to avoid a shutdown. But the other major bill up for consideration, a trillion dollar infrastructure deal has stalled. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi says it could come to a vote today. And another crisis looms for Congress this month. Lawmakers have until October 18th to raise the limit of the country's debt ceiling before it runs out of money to fund itself. Let's go ahead and check in with Dada now for a look at our forecast. It is going to be nice, and if you happen to have the day off, you may want to spend it by the beach. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I Lucky mean, ducks. yeah, every, any day you have off, right? <laughs> Why not? <laughs> well, today it's going to be Today's nice. Yeah, it's going to be nice at the beach. This weekend's going to be nice. We're talking 80s at our beaches because inland areas, you will feel that heat, so you actually may need a little relief. Yeah, we're talking uh, kind of summer-like weather. It's not going to feel uh, like October 1st today. Oh, no, no. And this weekend, we're going to stay warm, uh, so hopefully you don't mind that stuff. Sunshine, warm weather, not bad. Uh, here's our view from San Miguel. As you see Sweetwater Reservoir right there, the lights of the South Bay off in the distance, and then there's the ocean way out there. Usually we get the clouds coming in from the coast, not today. So uh, that is, you know, sign of offshore winds. We do have elevated fire weather concerns through Monday because of the heat up, the offshore winds as well. So that's why this morning is pretty dry. Next week, 
things all change. We cool down. So, you know, enjoy these little last few days of summer and fall <laughs> while you can. It is starting off chilly, so you will likely need a jacket or at least a light sweater. 51 in Escondido, 52 in Poway, 46 in Ramona, 60 degrees right now in Borrego. Let's show you the dry factor. So we're feeling a lot of that dry air in the mountains at this hour. Alpine, you're at single digit relative humidity. And this afternoon, that will stay pretty dry, especially for inland valleys, because look at that. The arrow is still coming in from the east. So still noticing the offshore winds coming through overall though clear fairly clear our satellite imagery definitely showing we do have uh, clear skies in effect through the weekend until a system way up there will change things up for next week. So I'll get into those details coming up in your full forecast.